Hello and welcome to this week's Ask Me Anything Live. I'm Gerd Melak from seoleverage.com. Thank you so much for tuning in. We've got a series of interesting questions today we are going to tackle. Uh, first of all, I would like to mention we have got uh, still the coaching program on a starter fee you want to check out. You probably won't believe we're giving in-depth coaching um, within a private coaching thread available helping you through your website optimization. We have tons of courses. I record courses every month, at least one, and I put them in there. There's one about Search Console, for example. There's one about small business SEO. So definitely check out seoleverage.com slash coaching because this might just be the opportunity you have waited for to get guidance on your SEO and start tackling the low-hanging fruits because one of the main issues with SEO is really that we work on the wrong things. So you can do like 100 things of SEO, but it's the 80-20 rule that's very important here to take into account. We want to focus on the 20% that are going to impact your website traffic on 80%. First of all, I would like to tackle the May 2020 core update we are going through right now. They started on the 5th or 6th of May probably. If you have some ranking drop, it's probably based on this update. It is still rolling out. So this is going to take for a couple of weeks, probably uh, until it's fully rolled out. We do know a few things, or we think we know a few things already. Um, some of them are that apparently freshness is going to be a topic again. We see a lot of sites with fresh content getting to the top and uh, sites that haven't been updated for quite a while, dropping in rankings. We see that Google apparently has a stronger focus on certain keywords uh, that might have a uh, connotation with the medical space or the financial space. And if you are in one of those spaces, we call them your money, your life spaces. So everything that affects money or life, health, etc., of Google users is, uh, is being taken special care of at Google. So if you're in one of those spaces, you want to make sure you justify why you're uh, able to give certain advice. What's your certifications? Give your background. Make sure your website states a phone number if possible, etc. And also um, make sure that there is uh, another about page and things like that. Put the microphone in. I think it's better now. Um, also, when uh, on the update, we also saw uh, site speed being a possible issue again, where we see that um, we see that sites with a lower site speed have issues. So you want to tackle this as well. And especially with every core update, you would want to check out your overall site usability. You would want to check out how um, people can consume your content. You want to check out how uh, how much they have to scroll down in order to consume what they want to consume. So definitely um, take a look at this. By the time, if by, uh, by the way, if you don't know this, we have these Ask Me Anything calls every Friday. So if you have any uh, questions on them, send an email to support at seoleverage.com. We collect the questions and then answer them uh, collectively on these calls. A different question we got was how to migrate to a different domain. And that's an interesting one. So this client in particular wanted to migrate because they kind of uh, got very, very focused on one single service on their website and they wanted to spread out a little bit and thought it would be a good idea to rebrand. But they did have some articles that were ranking very well. They did have some articles that were getting traffic from Google. So for the migration, what I would suggest is migrate at least the pages that have traffic and any internal page that links to them. Uh, you can also essentially migrate all the pages to the you have to the all the articles you have on posts to the new domain. Uh, make sure you create so called three or one redirections. So whatever URL existed before should be I uh, should be able to click on it to put it into the browser and get redirected with a so called three or one redirection to the new URL. And definitely also make sure that um, the new domain gets links. So if you do the re 301 re redirection, Google, what we have seen in some multiple projects is that Google transfers the authority and the signals they have on the old, on the old domain 
to the new one. Uh, if you don't have the redirection done properly, Google is going to uh, see it as a completely new domain, guess a certain uh, amount of signals, and it's going to be within what we call like the sandbox, which is like like just the space Google denies it exists, but we know there is like like a space where uh, websites collect signals or Google collects signals about websites before really giving them um, good rankings on Google search. So def definitely build links, build signals, social ads, etc., to your new website afterwards, to the articles on your new website, get some links, and this should work well then. Most pr issues with redirections, uh, with, with site migrations, are really based on a lack of uh, execution on the redirections, or, or to re they just redirect like three URLs, and we have got 500 of them. And then you have like the issue that the link choose and the um, power that was flowing to the website from other links isn't going to be leveraged if the URLs don't exist anymore. Another question this time from the e-commerce space. My card abandonment rate is over 80%. So maybe to clarify the card, card abandonment rate refers uh, to the number of people that uh, go to your, add something to their card um, and then don't uh, finish the, uh, the full checkout process. Uh, a number here about 50, 60% is pretty common. So a lot of people might add something to the card and never purchase just because we like to click on things. We like to add it to the card. We like to see what the total cost will be. And then we keep thinking about what we're going to do with it. 80% is pretty high. So what I would look for here is, uh, first of all, trust signals. What can you do to create more trust into your brand? Second thing I would make sure is that people really know all the costs involved and all the conditions involved before they come to your purchase um, page. Sometimes we see high card abandonment rates when people um, actually hide their shipping fees or their handling fees, etc., and and only show them on the last screen where uh, people get annoyed when there are additional costs they weren't prepared to, to pay, etc., and they abandon the shopping cart process. Card abandonment, on the other hand, is also something very natural. If you think how many times you were doing something on the computer and you got sidetracked, uh, if you have kids, if you get a phone call, etc., you might not be able to finish the process in this moment. But then it's a good practice to have like a so-called card abandonment sequence in place, where you then can follow up with these people by email, send them their card so with one click they can um, finish the purchase maybe or give them additional information, help them to overcome some optic obstacles or create some more confidence into your brand. So all these things can help you lower down the card abandonment rate to a more reasonable level. The next question we got is about a website that's available in three different languages. Uh, can we still rank well? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Um, you definitely need to do some work. SEO in multilingual environments isn't easy. There is a lot of things you need to be uh, aware of, you need to take care of. We're just starting a new project with English and French, for example, where there are a few things we would like to adjust as well on the on the website and on how they um, how they organize the different languages there, because it can get very messy. Um, you need to think that uh, languages exist in multiple target markets. You need to make sure that people can switch between different languages and really get like a, a very similar uh, user experience and content experience. So there is a lot of a lot of things going into this. I would advise you to get some professional help here. Multilingual environments. Um, there's just a, a lot of things that can go wrong in terms of SEO on multilingual sites. This starts from the domain where some people uh, have like a country level domain like .de for Germany or, or .com.au for Australia. And you want to rank in, in other countries where you should essentially have a .com. And this goes over to the quality of the translations, uh, to the user experience in another language where you want to have a native give you feedback on what the experience is like. Etc. So there is quite a few things you can definitely rank. Um, big companies show us show this all the time. They rank in multiple languages and very well for their products and services. SEO is pretty 
pretty much the same. You just have multiple websites and multiple pieces of content you need to target. And the French version and the French market might expect something different than the English market. So you might want to check out the local competition. If I want to rank in France, I need to check google.fr and see what's ranking there. What are people expecting there? It's not necessarily the same as in Australia or in the UK. Uh, France can be different. Spain is different. Austria and Germany are probably different from, uh, from the user expectations when they go to search. So don't try to think that every everything is going to be similar just in another language. It might be a completely different experience. We've also seen that even the websites are different. Some in some countries, websites are more like more uh, more um, professional layout. Others use more colors and have more a creative layout. So these things also factor in because at the end of the day, Google wants to provide the best user experience possible, and this is only possible if they meet user expectations. And user expectations across countries, languages, and cultures can be different. So this is something you want to take into account. Um, I would advise you to seek uh, professional help from a consultant and a one if you want. Um, but still get help and get this set up properly because there is just like a hundred things that can go wrong right from the start. The next question we got is, I'm a small business. What can I do for SEO? There's quite a few things you can do for SEO. Small businesses not necessarily um, only can focus on Facebook ads or things like that. There is a lot you can do for SEO. It is a little bit of a difference if you are on the local level of your local small business or if you're an online small business, because online you obviously have like a, a broader target audience. It could be national, it could be international. If you're a local business, it's more about your surroundings and maybe 10, 20 kilometers around you. Uh, but there's definitely a lot of things you can do for SEO. In general, whenever you can answer a question your, your prospects and your uh, potential clients ask and create a piece of interesting and relevant content around it, it's going to be good for your SEO. Okay, this is just like a general rule. But there's a lot of things you can do, a lot of things to depend on your situation. Um, I've just created a course around this, uh, which is in the SEO Leverage Coaching Group, where we talk about actionable SEO advice for small businesses. And one part of it is also links. So depending on where you are and what's your target audience, um, you can then figure out what's the best way to uh, to address SEO, to get links, where are the most relevant links in your space, and then figure out the overall strategy you want to go. So if you're a small business, I think our coaching program would probably be the ideal thing for you to go for, because consulting might be uh, without reach, but the SEO coaching program, I mean there personally with the private coaching, so people ask me questions private on a private chat, uh, which is not shared with anybody, I answer them questions and check out their website personally and, and see what could be the next possible step to take. And yeah, if you want to check this out, this is uh, seoleverage.com slash coaching. I think for small businesses is probably one of the best offers you can get right now in order to work and build up your SEO. SEO is a long-term game. So you need to build this up, but you would want to build it up in the right way with the right content structure in mind and the right uh, processes and focus. There's a lot of things you can do in SEO, but there's just a few things that really are going to make a difference and in particular for small businesses. So if we don't have any other questions, uh, let's end this today's call. Uh, we're going to do these calls every Friday. So if you have any questions at some point, send an email to support at seoleverage.com or via direct message on one of our channels. I'm happy to address them here. I'm also picking some questions from the coaching and from our help desk, which I know come up all the time. So this is as worthwhile as possible. If you want to listen to other Ask Me Anything um, calls or Ask Me Anything sessions, go to YouTube, find us with SEO Leverage. There are all the videos there. And you can probably pick up quite a few pieces of advice for your own strategy. So thank you very much for tuning in today. Have a great weekend and hopefully see you next Friday.